Hey there, sweet cheeks. Did Pulse Chain and PulseX raise too much money? The answer is actually no. Even though Pulse Chain and PulseX raised billions of dollars, we think they are large numbers. But luckily for you, I went and I actually did the research. I've already calculated this for you. I compared other chains. Ethereum, maybe you've heard of it. It was six times bigger than Pulse and PulseX if you measure the raise compared to the entire crypto industry at a time. So this was the same thing for Cardano. Cardano was 12 times bigger. Huge. So Ethereum still did a 15,500x in two cycles. Cardano in its first cycle did a 420x and then in the second cycle did 110x or something from the very, very bottom, 150x. Big. Binance was actually 50% smaller than Pulse and Pulse X. I have the data here. You can even see it, right? If you go down, for example, look at Cardano here. Cardano raised $60 million, which was 0.6% of the entire crypto industry. That's enormous. Pulse Chain and Pulse X are the ones listed right here. Pulse was only 0.042%. Pulse X, 0.049%. So the numbers, they weren't raised too big. It's very interesting to think about if you're trying to see is something expensive or isn't it? Because it's all going to come down to Metcalf's law. How high do we think Pulse and PulseX and even Hex are going to go? Now, this is just eHex, but total Hex, right? Total Hex is like, what, 2.4 cents? So you might even be able to just draw a line here and just assume they're around here, right? Maybe put it on a regular chart. So how high are they going to be able to go? It all depends on the number of users. Very interesting information here for you. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, press the bell button and all. I appreciate every single one of you. We are here to shock the algorithm and also shock you because you've never seen a friend like this. All this hard work and research done for you. Cardano at one point, I think it still does, has about 50,000 daily active users. So if you really want to compare... Cardano's got about 50,000 daily. Ethereum has about 400,000 daily. In the bull market, it went up to like 800,000, 700,000 for Ethereum. It wasn't even that much. Now, these are daily active users. It's not unique users. What's very interesting is layer one chains seem to be valued based off how much daily active users they have. Of course, you can already see people saying, no, I can spam the chain and then I can do fake people. But this is why it gets tougher and harder to get proper data because people start to obfuscate things. We have a lot of people, third world countries doing 10 cent transactions back and forth. But we're trying to value these, trying to get a scope of what it looks like. All right. Now, I have these chart here just to show you. At some point, you could even calculate these and show these on charts. At one point in 2020, Cardano only had 11,000 people. It grew to 154,000 at the very, very peak of 2021. Interesting that this works out. Metcalf's Law, it always works, friends. Metcalf's Law works on Ethereum. Of course it does. It works on everything. Crypto is value, valued based off a network. If only you had a friend who made so many videos for you to actually teach you and show you all this information here and how it all lines up. So Ethereum's ICO had about 6,600 people. Fascinating. It was about 31 cents. It's about 6,600. I think it went up to 10,000. You get the point. Then it went to 400,000 daily active wallets. And at the time of this post, remember this post was earlier in this year, January 2023. So you just did Metcalf's Law. Remember Metcalf's Law just says, if you increase the size of your user base by a factor of N, the price is going to be doing the value squared, you're going to get a parabolic price pump. So if you are able to increase your user base by 10x, you will get 10 squared the price pump. So you'll be able to get a parabolic price pump, 100x prices. It is not 100% exact. It's not meant to be a specific science. I'm just giving you the idea that crypto does go parabolic when you add more users. And this is why it does. And this is why also it gets harder and harder to keep pumping. It's because your user base is too big. For example, Bitcoin now has 100 million people. At the start, Bitcoin only had like 10. Then it went to 10,000, then a million. Now you have 100 million people. So look at this. 
Ethereum, it increased its user base by 60x. So if we do 60 squared, we'll have 3,600x on the 31 cents ICO. That brings us to a price of $1,127 today. Now, Ethereum, of course, these numbers are from January. Ethereum is higher than that, and they're probably the daily active users are higher. But man, it's crazy. If we were to go back all the way to the ICO, we go back all the way down here, okay? If we go back, we go back down, it's 31 cents. Imagine someone told you, hey, do you think Ethereum could have 500,000 daily active users one day? And you said yes. What you didn't know was you would also be saying yes to the chances that Ethereum would be up 5,000x for you. That's what you would be saying yes to. They are one in the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Just like how Einstein has E equals MC squared, we have Metcalf's law, okay? N equals price squared, okay? You square the price, the value. When you square the number of people in there, you're going to get the value of how much is created in there. I've made so many videos explaining why in the nitpicks and the details. So it all comes down to adoption, all about the people. It's not about finding one whale to come and just sit there and be your friend in the, in the ecosystem. It's about more and more people. That's why grassroots community matters. So it's fascinating that we get this price. And as well, Ethereum, it works on Metcalf's law, right? Look at this. Ethereum tracks Metcalf's law. This gentleman actually put it. So this was back in February 2022, a long time ago. Maybe you remember this year. My hypothesis is due to EIP plus the merge, we will see a huge supply shock. So it still hasn't played out yet. The bull market hasn't come. This is me talking in 2022. Staking ETH to get yield will be lucrative. How about that? Genu February 2022, I'm saying this. So this was the chart back then, but they're approximating the amount of users coming in and it f seems to follow the trend here. Bitcoin happens with Bitcoin, happens with Ethereum, happens with all the big networks, happens. So now I'm going to bring you to look into hex.com forward slash adoption. This chart is the hex staking. The very top blue line we're going to see is actually Ethereum's user base, Ethereum's wallet count. Now, this is where it gets tough. If you focus your eye up here, you see Ethereum holders, 90 million, 112 million, 200 million. Unfortunately, there's a lot of mass spammed wallets. So these aren't real people. Ethereum does not have 185 million people. So it's getting harder and harder to get real data. But we know the daily active users. There's about 500 to 600,000. That's what happens. So the daily active users is funny enough what the market seems to respect. So even if you had 50 trillion accounts, it doesn't really matter. The more active users you have, the better. And that's what the market seems to value. And it's interesting because this is exactly how a city is valued. The economy of a country, we know the same thing. How many active people are there working? That's how we get the GDP. That's how we get GDP per capita. Isn't it crazy how it all works out in the land of crypto and digital cyberspace? If we look down, we can see the Ethereum numbers, but then we can also see hex stakers, 120,000 roughly. Total hex stakers, 158,000. Now, I don't know the exact specific differences between each of them. All you need to know is this pink line has been going up. It has been slanting because we've had a bear market, okay? But... When we talk about price pumps of the future, we're talking about Pulse, Pulse X, Hex. What we're actually doing is we're just guessing how many people we're going to have in the future, okay? We're not saying Richard Hart's going to be successful or a failure. We're not saying that the community is going to not get enough tattoos. We're not saying any of that. All we're saying is how many people do we think we're going to have in the future? That's what we can do. So if you want to know some other numbers out there, I mean, Shiba Inu has like 1.3 million on Ethereum people, Okay. Doge has, I think, like 4.6 million people, all right? Pulse, Pulsex, and Hex have like 150K around there, all of them probably. That's all of us together. So you can see we're much smaller. We are much smaller, yet there's a price discrepancy going on because you have a different makeup of what we call the nodes in Metcalf's Law, the size of everyone's wallets, how active people are. People have multiple wallets. There's so much blurring of the lines here. It's really hard to get specific numbers, but it's, it is something to think about. This is why we think, well, if Doge and SHIB, if, Do if SHIB can get over a million people, why can't Hex, Pulse, X, and Pulse, right? But 
I'm going to leave you just with something to think about because this is interesting. So if you say to me that you think Richard Hart, if you think the Richard Hart ecosystem, Hex, Pulse, Pulse X, if you think we can do 10 times the users from here, we'll get 100x price. 10x the users, right? 100x the price. That's fantastic. Thumbs up. But there's something we've got to think about. What we have to think about is, will the market value Pulse, PulseX, and Hex? Will it value them as three coins or one coin? Three coins or one coin, right? It would actually be four coins, right? If you talk about E-Hex and P-Hex, that's what it would really be. Is it going to be four coins or one coin? And have a nice, lovely picture for you because you wear your fluffy slippers and you are high in protein and... You're also a yummy donut sometimes. This is going to draw it out for us. So four coins or one coin. We have to think about this because if you said to me, we are going to go around SHIB size. We're going to get to 1.5 million people. We're going to 10x. Well, what you're effectively saying is we're going to go 100x. And that's fair enough. But 100x, is it going to be 33x in each of these or is it going to be 100x in each we don't know what the future holds it depends on the new people coming in are there going to be people who go only to pulse chain are there going to be people who only go to pulse x who only go to hex there will be a few but you got to think about the collective mindset of everyone because right now, and let's be honest, it's a rigid hard ecosystem, okay? It really is. No matter what we try to say and do, maybe he's got a plan, no expectations plan to separate this. I don't know. Maybe he's looking up what a Vitalik did to kind of like decentralize, neutralize this. But it is what it is right now. So from what we can see, because based of this current information, if we did a 33x of each, we would get, you know, around... 33x here we'll get a 33x on pulse x we might get a 33x total so that's about 100 total now what would these numbers be i mean this would be around these are from day one sacrifices right so from from sorry from from today's price so as, as you can already tell the numbers they kind of don't meet up with everybody's expectations but that's of course we just plugged in the future how do we know we stop at shib what if we go double SHIB's numbers? Why are we stopping at 1.5 million? What if we go to 2.5 million? Or what if we stop under it? We don't know. But you've also got to think about the liquidity bonding because all of these are bonded together. So that's another thing to think about. All of the money is shared amongst the pool. Pulse, PulseX, people can rotate in and out. We are distributing the money around the same groups of people. So it's the same people. They're all over, we're all overlapping, right? Everybody owns most of the coins. Everybody's in the ecosystem. Everybody's in the community. There's nobody who's doing something different. This is different to Bitcoin and Ethereum. There is more of a split. It's also different to uni holders and Ethereum. Yes, there's overlaps, but you can tell people who hold uni, not necessarily their ETH maxis. So this is where we don't know the answer. That's why you've got to think about it. We have to try to get ahead of the crowd to see what the future can hold here. Because if you add all of these up, I think the RH ecosystem right now is roughly 5 billion market cap. So that's if you include Pulse, PulseX, and Total Hex, 5 billion market cap. So if we were to do all of these together, to get to 500 billion MC, it would be these numbers. It would be a 33X of each. But this is where, of course, we're moving into the shadows here. And remember, like, looking at these numbers, it doesn't really help us much because at the end of the day, ratios are moving. There's going to be euphoria. Maybe there's a wallet sacrifice. But this is where we just have to be intellectually honest about the people coming in. Now, everybody's trying to onboard neutral, new projects and to expand it. But this is where we are when it comes to the fork in the road. But we could plug in some quick numbers. For example, if total hex equals one dollar right then this would be 90 billion for the hex part and for pulse x around the 60x from day one sack would be around 
60 billion valuation, roughly, just to have a have a stab at it. And for Pulse, it would be roughly the exact same thing. Now, of course, the ratios are going to move up and down, all right? So you're looking at these numbers, you just got to think, all right? How likely do you think we're going to get there? And are you happy if we're somewhere a bit below it? Are we happy if we're even at these numbers? What are you going to do? Because at the end of the day, you know, all it comes down to is the number of people who are joining in. And, you know, for reference, I know we've spoken about other coins, but if we go back and check Cardano, BNB, where did they peak? BNB peaked $100 billion. And Cardano, Charles Hoskinson's coin, also peaked $100 billion. So looking the, looking at these, looking at the Richard Hart ecosystem, is it possible we're at roughly 210 billion? If you add all of these, it does add up to 210 billion, right? I can see this world happening. The sacrifice was not too much, but you, you got to think about these returns. They look big when I tell you how they all fit the pieces of the puzzle, but you don't have a 500x for every single coin, you know? There are no answers in these. There are only probabilities. But at least we've got to flesh them out. And don't forget, Pumpkin, that's why I have this ratio here that I'll always stick by. If you have an equal amount, Pulse, Pulse X, EHEX, PHEX, and you just DCA, you can't go wrong. Because one of them's going to be strong for a while, the other's going to be weak. At least you'll be able to get to participate, and you won't feel like you're getting gypped on any part of the Richard Hart ecosystem, which is the most important thing you're going to be caring about once Euphoria finally does arrive. But first, the first target is for Eric to lose his bet at a simple 10x. Tell mum and dad we're still going to make it. We love them very much. I'm going to catch you in the next one.